we're going to look today um, at a concept called integration, but we're going to start off really simply with sort of what, it, what it's talking about and what it, how we can make a rule to sort of get ourselves out of trouble with integral integration, sometimes called antiderivatives. If we have the function y equals x squared, we can derive that to be x to the power of 3, so that equals 3x squared. Happy with that? So if I wanted to know, so if I gave you a function dy dx equals 3x squared, could you tell me what y equals? Hmm? x to the power of 3? Am I certain that's the function? That has to be it. There's nothing else it can be. Shh, Nick, you're ruining it for everyone. He knows too much. Well, if I had, I'll do the same graph that I just have over there because I can't see it. If I have a function that looks like this, right? What's, that's y equals x cubed. The root of that function is 3x squared. What about this function here? That's uh, y equals x cubed minus, give me a number. Two. two, that'll do. So that point there is? Two. Negative two, okay. What's the root of that function? 3x squared. So, can you definitively say that if dy dx equals 3x squared, then y equals x cubed. Why not? Yeah. So, what is a derivative? The gradient, the rate of change, right? And that doesn't matter when we're talking about um, our function. So, y equals x cubed. We don't care. The rate of change doesn't, doesn't change regardless of whether there's a c value or not, does it? When we integrate, we're looking for the area under that line, between the line and the x-axis. Does that matter? Does the c value matter? Yes. So if you're looking at this function over here, we've got y equals x cubed and y equals x cubed plus 2. Does that one have the same area between the line or are they different? So obviously we need to consider that, and that's why we have our C value there. Happy with that? What must I write? What have I not written that I should write? that mean? Um, real yep, C is any real number. Could be any real number. Sweet. So in the red, I've got what did you use to find that rule? So we had y equals x to the power of 3 and dy dx equals 3x squared. How did we find that? So if I gave you the function y equals x to the power of n dy dx must equal n, x, n minus 1. So, we've dealt with the c. Let's ignore the c for now. Let's just ignore it. Let's simplify it. Can I make a rule to help us go back? And whatever your rule is, what does that plus c on the end? Write your rule down. I'll give you a minute. Write your rule down, see if we can get it. So if dy dx equals x to the power of n, y equals x to the power of n plus 1 plus c. Why don't you agree? You're right not to agree. Why not? Um, 
Let's use math words, not moving. Jackson, what do you reckon? So your n could be a negative power. I'll test that. I'll test the rule out in a second. Not a bad thought, but it might still work. There's something missing from Blake's rule. It's pretty close. Well, let's have a look here. n plus 1. He's got the 3. Because it was 2, now it's 3. That's all good. He's got the c. What's he drop? Because that would read this, wouldn't it? It would read 3x cubed. Divide by n. Is it? What was n? n is 3. No. Because n is the exponent. The original exponent, wasn't it? Yeah. So what's... It would be the coefficient. 